This episode of Brew Chat with the Scots is brought to you by Bull City Homebrew. Bull City Homebrew has all the equipment and ingredients you need to get the most out of your hobby. Stop by their store on Highway 54 in Durham and check them out online at bullcityhomebrew.com. Hey guys, I'm Scott. And I'm Scott. We're from Bull City Homebrew. We teach brew school here, and we're gonna talk to you today about IBUs. And what do IBUs mean? Well, they kind of come from what we think is the best ingredient in beer, the glorious hops. We got side by side here, we've got the pellets, and we've got the whole leaf hops. And they go into our beer, and there's a number uh, called the IBU, stands for International Bittering Units. I originally thought it was a beer university type of thing. That would be pretty awesome. I would take classes there for sure. I totally would have applied, but um, apparently it has nothing to do with the university. It's an International Bittering Unit, and you'll see it on the, the side of some home brewing kits. Basically, the higher the number, the hoppier it is, the more of the hop backbone you're gonna find in your beers. IPAs will generally be in the 60s. Your pale ale's probably in the 30s. This is just a summer ale. Something light for the summer. The IBUs here are between 18 and 20, so not too hoppy. So there's two things that brewers use to bitter, bitter and add aroma flavor to the beer, and add aroma and flavor to the beer. There are your whole leaf hops and your pellets, which looks like looks like rabbit food, doesn't it? It does, and it smells pretty good too. I still love smelling this. How much do you enjoy the flavor of the hops? It's the best ingredient, for sure. It is. Now, can I challenge you to eat one? Uh, I think I'll leave that to you. <laughs> this is a good dare. Now, if you've ever never done this before, and you're into eating outrageous, crazy things and taking stupid challenges, then this is for you. Now, it looks kind of harmless, right? It's like it's a little thing. It's, it smells so good. It's hops. It's wonderful. It's delicious. It's delicious in liquid form, but in solid form, not that good. You sure you don't want to try one? I'm gonna let you do it. You'd be really manly if you did it. No, I'm gonna let you take all the glory. All right, here we go. Tell it for the team. And while I'm doing this, you're gonna need to talk more about IBU. So here I we will. go. <clears throat> and down the half. All right. So what people don't really know is that there are a lot of types of hops. Uh, down at our store, we sell about 70 different types of hops, and there's actually even more than that. Some of the hops are really well suited for adding bitterness to beer. Some of the hops are better suited towards adding aroma or flavor to the beer. Uh, basically, each hop has a different, what's called, alpha level to it. When hops are added to beer while it's being boiled, uh, different alpha acids are included in the beer. They're isomerized. That's my sciencey term for the day. Isomerized. Isomerized. Do you like that? Well done, Professor. Yes. And uh, that means that the uh, essential oils in those acids are being basically added to the wort that's being boiled. Uh, the more that those are included, the more bitter the beer is going to be. Uh, so hops that are added at the beginning of the boil of the beer, they're going to add a lot of bitterness. Hops that are added halfway through the boil, they add a lot of flavor. Hops that are added at the end add a lot of aroma. Uh, and every beer is different. So every single beer that you see on tap or that you see on the shelf, uh, it has its own set of hops that are added at different times during the boil. Uh, it's almost like a fingerprint for the beer. How's that hop? Oh, it's, it's bad. <laughs> they look so good and they smell so good, but they taste something awful. They're just, ugh. Maybe if you put some milk on it and eat it with a spoon. Maybe if I had another one, I wouldn't really notice it as much. <laughs> Maybe if I had a couple of beers. <coughs> you God, I need something that's much. horrible. I wanted to also point out one thing. Uh, beers also have uh, not only alpha acids, but beta acids. The beta acids take over where the alpha acids, uh, when they break down after time, if your beer's been in a bottle for a long time, a problem we don't usually have because... Pure, oh man, this is awful. It's still with me. It's like it's in my throat. I feel like it's taking over my body. Anyway, the beta acids take over after the alpha acids break down over time and will continue giving you some of that hot bitterness that <clears throat> I feel like it's going to stick with me for a while. <clears throat> but we don't usually have a, that much of a problem with it because the um, 
the uh, the IPAs usually don't hang around in the fridge or the keg very long at our places. They usually get drank rather quickly. By me. By you or other, <laughs> or other lovers of hops. So Scott mentioned too uh, that this look, kind of looks like rabbit food. Uh, this is actually pellet form. It looks like this. Basically what happens when uh, the hops are harvested by the hop farmers, uh, they'll take the cones and they'll dry them out, which is what you see here. This is dried hop leaves. Some people like to actually make their beer with this. Uh, the problem with this is that it takes a lot of this type of hop to actually make beer. And it's a huge mess to clean up after you make it. That's why a lot of commercial breweries don't actually use fresh hops or whole leaf hops when they make beer. Uh, they actually use these pellets. Uh, I remember not too long ago watching a documentary on Dogfish Head. Uh, it ran on the History Channel or something like that. But I remember seeing them use these three-story tall fermenters and pouring in garbage cans of these hot pellets and thinking, wow, that's really cool. That's what we use in our home brewing. Um, it's much easier to use and much easier to clean up. And there are some people who can say that they taste the difference between using whole leaf hops and using hot pellets. I personally can't. I think that they taste just as good either way. Uh, so this is definitely not a shortcut, uh, but it's much easier to use than whole leaf hops. One more thing to point out about when we talked about IBUs. <clears throat> Man, I needed some water to get this flavor out, but it's yes. still there. It's haunting me. <laughs> we mentioned the higher the IBU count, the more bitter your beer is going to be. But sometimes you, the flavor, the hop flavoring and bitterness can be masked by a, a big multi profile. For instance, Scott and I shared Founders KBS the other day. It was delicious beer, although we thought it was a little light in the carbonation department. It had 90 IBUs. Now I see 90 and I'm thinking, this thing's a double IPA because that's in your in your uh, range for your double IPAs when it's around 90. But I didn't really even notice the hops because it was so big and malty. Did you detect much no. hop presence in there? I thought that it would taste very hoppy, almost like an IPA also. And you couldn't even taste the hops in it. Plus it's aged in the bourbon barrels, so there's some of the bourbons coming through too. And it was just, it was masked and balanced out so well with all the malt that you almost didn't even notice. So, you know, don't, if, if you don't like the hoppy stuff, don't necessarily go running from a high IBU number. Look at the alcohol content too, because that's going to be a big factor in how much you're going to taste the hops. So in this beer that we were talking about, I think it was 11 or 12% alcohol. It's a, it's a pretty big beer. So because it was so malty, because it had so much, um, alcohol in there because it was so sugary and, and in a way it had some sweetness you couldn't really taste as much of the hot bitterness as you might in an, a beer like an IPA or a double IPA. Right that's what brewers are looking for in a beer is a balance between that maltiness and between the hoppiness in the beer. There you go. All right <clears throat> that's a little primer on IBUs International Beer University. No, I'll take classes not there. We you let me there. know and <laughs> you let me know when that when exists. Open up a campus. I think we found a new calling for us. We're opening up the IBU. We'll be accepting applications for the class of 2020 very soon. Now, IBU's International Bittering Units, Scott and Scott from Bull City Homebrew. Thanks for watching.